Hello. <coughs> oh, excuse my throat. And welcome to a video on how filters shouldn't look. Now this filter is from a Power VX2 um, Vax cleaner. It claims to trap dust and allergies. Which it might do if it was ever cleaned during its lifetime. At the moment all it's doing is setting off my chest. Um, I'm going to show a bit of cleaning of it. I won't clean it all. Um, the machine itself doesn't work. Um, it was given for free um, from a lady in the same village as I. Alongside a Charles pneumatic which does work and I'm very grateful for. Um, it's my first pneumatic so look forward to seeing him in future videos. Both machines were kept in the shed which it took me a, a bit of bravery to open because the interior of the lid of this bagless machine was full of cobwebs and I am terrified of spiders. The Charles is also a bit webby so I'm asking my husband to to clean him or at least be on standby in case something with eight legs jumps out on me. So I personally hate these filters of a vengeance. This is not the first filter I've cleaned in this method. Now you can just wash them, but if you're hand washing like I do, you won't actually get <coughs> the dust and the dirt out because it's fairly ingrained in. You have to use something with a bit of a point on the end. This is a twisted bit of wire. To dig all out each of the accordion spaces. And then you have to use another hoover <coughs> to soak it all up. And this can take hours. Now don't get me wrong, it is actually almost therapeutic. But if like me you have some chest issues, it doesn't do that a whole lot of good. Now, if you have a machine that you're going to have to dig the filter out on, I recommend using one that is rated for trapping dust and etc. Which for me is the Siebel, which is behind me that you can't see. Now, <sighs> the last filter that I had was... Pop that up, let you see it a bit easier. The last filter that I had that was this bad was the machine that I'm planning on listening for sale later today, which was another Vax, Vax Air Essentials. And while I did open up each bit of the filter, it was just a waste of time. The filter on that was actually very badly deformed before it was even touched. So. Let's see if you can see that. Now, as you can see, sorry, it's not camera angle for me today. But you should be able to see that that filter is clean. <coughs> because I did, in fact, clean it all. Sorry, a kilogram of rice falling down behind me. Now I cleaned all of that out, it was the first that was that bad. I had previously cleaned out another accordion, which wasn't too bad. But that one, with the shape all blown out, there's no way to return it to the original shape. So it had to be replaced. Um, a replacement for the machine, the Vax Essentials machine, was around £6. So in general, buying a new filter is going to be more 
more worthwhile than sitting doing this for a hobby. That and you can just bin the horrible thing that I have in front of me. However, as you can see, this filter hasn't blown. It's lost a bit of its tight shape. No laughing. Um, but in general, this would be, with an awful lot of work, repairable to a standard that could be usable again. Now, obviously, what you would have to do is clear all of this out by hand. Every single bit. And then after that, you would have to wash it and then wash it again. Then let it dry. And then do this again. Because it doesn't come out first go. And as with the one that I've just shown you, I had to repeat that process a number of times before it actually was fully clean, as it is now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly get what we've got there vacuumed up so we can see the state of affairs. <laughs> And then back, this is the same bit I was in already. And you can see I've got most of that bit out. Pretty good. But the one next to it, because it was still almost in shape, it got missed. And there's tons of crap in there. Now, obviously, if you've got a machine like this, and money's very tight, then... As long as they aren't deformed, like you saw the previous one, you can clean them. You're not going to enjoy it. Well, as I say, it can almost be therapeutic, but your body's not going to enjoy it. And it will come up in a manner that is usable for the machine. Even that deformed one, at a push you could use. And of course, when you're looking at replacing a filter on a machine that's been through that amount of abuse, you might be near a belt breakage as well, so you might want to buy spare belts, at which point your cost for the machine to get it up and running again properly is heading on to about 10 quid. And on Facebook Marketplace, you can, or Gumtree even, you can get another machine for £10. Now, I am against trashing machines for the sake of trashing them. I do like to see them brought back to life. Do someday a turn, whether you sell them, give them away, hand them into a charity shop. It's just less landfill. And that's kind of what my beliefs are about. Waste not, want not. And that in the likelihood there's always somebody who wants a free machine. If you don't want to charge it. And one of those people would be me given I got this machine for free. Um, if we can figure out how to get it running again because it doesn't power up well, it did, briefly, but we've been told it didn't power up um, when we got it. And it's not the fuse, because that's the first the first point of hope, is it's just a fuse. No, not a fuse. 
And it's currently in bits in my living room. Oh, on my living room floor. Well, my husband battles out with it. Which is not looking to be going well. If it turns out that it is not salvageable, and it is looking that way, then another part of waste not what not comes into play, which is salvaging parts. Now, I feel like I've actually mentioned this yet. Alan horses, I have two of them. One's 34 and one will be 12 come May. Now they live out all year round, natural shelter only. So they get rubbed up. Well, the 34 year old gets rubbed up in the winter and most of summer. Because um, we live in Scotland and it rains a lot. Now in the really bad weather we'll rug up the 12 year old. He's a real tank of a horse, um, so he doesn't need a rug. But I don't like snow lying on their backs. Touch wood, we've not had snow this year yet. Um, but too much lying on their back causes rain rot. And that's just fed bills I don't want. So he trashes rugs. He just can't help himself. He trashes everything. And when it comes to it, these rugs, which are often very expensive, more expensive than the second-hand vacuum cleaners, there's a point where you just have to call it a day. Like, you've stitched it up so many times that it's pointless. So we then be scrap the rug, but we take off all the useful parts that we could stitch onto the next rug that he breaks. So, with vacuum cleaners... I hold the the same ethos, might be the right word, and that if this machine here that I'm currently cleaning the filter for is a non-star, then we'll have to look at it and decide what parts of the machine are worth saving. Now, in most likelihood, I'll ask I will ask online with the the UK Vacuum Cleaner Group, which if you're not a member of and you're in the UK, come join us. It's run by Alex Raw and it's a lovely little group. I've learned an awful lot of things since joining there. And really just love it. It's really nice people. Good laugh. <laughs> um I've forgotten what I was saying there. Yes, I'll ask on there what's worthwhile salvaging before it's taken to landfill. Now, in my head, what I'll be looking to take off it will be the, the cord and the plug. <sighs> I'm terrible, I would scrap it right down. But I will ask. I'd be taking wheels off, keeping bins, essentially keeping half the machine, but just breaking it down to material parts. Um, there's possibly parts of a machine that I could sell on that are scary enough, and sometimes the parts themselves become worth more than what it costs to buy the machine second hand. But things like the hose, if the hose is in good nick, not checked that yet. But pretty much this will be the first machine that I'll have had to scrap completely. And that in itself will be a learning curve on what to keep. But it's a thought that if you do have these old machines lying about and you don't want to keep them, then they're not worth selling, then yeah, Scrap bits out of them. Have I rolled right off the screen with that? I'm sorry. It's 
cause a chatting and rolling it at the same time. so horrible, wasn't it? Other people with dirt. I'll be turning the sea bone again shortly. I don't know if MD is really interested in me doing vlogs like this in the future. I'm certainly fine with doing them. For making jobs like this a bit easier going. I have tried doing jobs like this while watching things. But I tend to find that if I'm watching something I just push it down. Or I got a bit done, I vacuum it up and then don't pick it up again. So, run the vlog while doing some of the messier work it makes it pass a bit quicker. Right, let me just get this overed. We're getting quite far with this that I wasn't going to finish going. I might get close enough to actually give it a wash. And I had some um, flasks after my health because I have mentioned it, um, especially this year. I'll see the thing. Well, last year. I forget we've changed years. <laughs> this year and last year. So I suffer from a number of health conditions. I'm not quite sure particularly good. The main one is that I have a severely bad back. I'm actually disabled um, when we go out, I have to use a mobility scooter, um, which I've got a hoist in my car for. And when you see me doing these videos like this one here, I'm actually in bed doing it. Which is why there's towels draped over everything. Um, any vacuuming videos are all done sitting down. And when I can vacuum bits of the house I do it seat to seat um, and usually my husband has to help 
finish up areas that would be right with my, my range. Um, so I broke my back as a child. I've fallen off a space hopper. I've got degenerative facet joints which cause my back to lock up. Which is incredibly painful. And I have degenerative discs. Which also not a walk in the park either. I currently have a slip disc. Which is agony but painkillers are helping. Aside from that, I've got some knock-on pains and injuries or flare-ups of old injuries um, due to my back. So my right knee at the moment is insanely painful. Um, both my hips hurt. But they have been scanned in the past and it's coming off my back. I have sciatica. I've hurt my Achilles tendon on my left foot. Um, my left leg is numb. But not my foot, just the leg. Um, so the ring finger and little finger on my left hand. They're numb. Oh. I think I was taking painkillers at high levels. It becomes difficult to remember every single ailment that's there. I suffer from chronic fatigue as well. Um, I have liver pain, which is a long story, but it's basically from my gallbladder um, that done damage, knock on damage there, because it took five years for them to remove my gallbladder. But that story is long and terrible. Um, I also have, and this is probably the biggest worry, complex atypical endometrial hyperplasia, which is essentially precancer for the womb. Um, I had an operation in December to take better biopsies to get a, a handle on where I actually am on the, the cancer scale and I should be having the results back in the next week or so I think it was six weeks I was meant to get results back I almost don't want to see them it's you know it's that bad I am precancerous, so the national biopsy did show that. Um, the main upset is that we wanted children, and because I'm overweight, the NHS don't give any fertility help. Um, if you're over a set weight, and the weight limit's really low, I might get there when I die. But <laughs> possibly not before then. I also have polycystic ovaries, which means getting an egg out is more complicated than if I didn't have it. So, it's the biopsy of broken dreams. I'm 36, so my baby bearing years are coming to a close and the only treatment to stop this cancer and to actually find out if you were fully loaded with cancerous cells is to have a hysterectomy at which point it doesn't matter because the, the baby making factory is gone so yeah it's, it's not good <laughs> Health wise, there's mental health issues as well. I have general anxiety disorder, panic disorder, and PTSD. I won't go into all the details because I'll just end up upset. But essentially, I lost all my family in 2016. 
my mum, well my nana died first. My mum died five days before my wedding. Um, we'd rushed the wedding because my dad was terminal. We planned the wedding in ten days. Five days in we were still planning a wedding and we were planning a funeral. It, it wasn't easy. It still isn't easy to talk about. Um, and then just shy of three months later, my dad died. Leaving me with nobody but my husband, um, family wise. And then in December, my dog was diagnosed as having an aggressive form of cancer that can't be cured. Now, touch wood, he's still with us, and that was. Two years ago? Has to be longer. No, it would be. I had his operation over December 2016 and his second operation in March, March 2017. So yeah, it'll be two years this year. Although we already had one two year, that was his tail. He's now got a stump. And he had a two kilogram lump removed from his side. Now the vet said he couldn't get it all and the, the cancer would regrow back into a lump. But touch wood, there'd be no lump. He came back. He is getting on. Um, so we're now at the stage where. And I'll be devastated when we lose him, but he's 12 years old now. He's a massive collie dog. I mean massive as in fat as well, but he won't lose weight. I think there's something else going on there. But he's happy, he's healthy. You would never know he'd anything wrong with him in the past. And at 12 I would expect to see other things start to take him out. So he's doing really well. I think it's because he's got a job. He was always told to look after me by my parents. So that's it. He's doing his job. Though he absolutely hates vacuum cleaners. And if you even so much as say the word hoover at him, he runs away and hides. So, as you can probably tell, my new hobby has not got a fan of my dog. Well, I think we're almost clean enough on this filter to do its first wash. That's what happens when you're weather and rubbish. And the way the dots come out of this, it does actually look that... Okay, it's a bit blown. You can see by the width of the, the things, but it would still be alright to use. I wouldn't sell one on like this. I'd buy a replacement. But as previously discussed, this one's going to the, the graveyard for electronics. <sighs> what always amazes me is that folk let their vacuum cleaners get into this condition. I mean, this is sold as non working. But the amount of dirt in it, and this wasn't the only thing that was clogged by crap. It's no wonder it doesn't work. I mean, other vacs that it's just a waiting to get loaded up for sale. We were given it for free, and we were told it didn't work very well. It had pure suction. It wasn't worthwhile. Well, I've already shown you the filter on it and it was as clogged up as this one was with dirt. As was the hose clogged up with dirt and other crap. And after you gave it a good clean, it worked like new. So it's always worth if you're Chucking a 
I hear about it because it's no good shooting lots of suction. Do some general maintenance on it. Especially if you're just using it as an appliance rather than collecting and refurbishing and cleaning them. Save you money. I mean with that the other bags that I've got going up for sale. Um I done a couple of tests and with that one I'm sure it was a SIBO I used. So I groomed one of my base mats to the point of it being super clean. I then ran the vax over it a couple of times and it still managed to pull up some dirt. It was only a tiny amount of dirt. But that sort of cheap end of vax versus a very expensive machine. That's impressive. You know, it just shows what a good clean to the machine can do. Is it maybe noisy and cheap? But it's still picking up on par with some of the the better machines. I had the the same result with the Electrolux Fatis. And in that case, I'd used my shark to clean one of the mats, ran the batiste over it, still picked up a bit of dirt. And I really make sure that these mats are vacuumed for an inch of their life, which just goes to show. Even the cheap machines that you, you have no faith in, they can actually do a decent pickup. As long as you look after them. And I think that's the downfall of the cheap machines is that unlike the more expensive machines, they really, really suffer when they're not looked after. Whereas the likes of the Dyson's, the Sebo, I'm guessing the Shark, I've not had it long enough to tell. Faced with rubbish care they can still trip on i mean a dyson 25 that i'm using at the moment the ball all it's had is its filters cleaned and that was our main machine in the house for a long time so it's manky it's really not had great care and it still performs well because it was quite a pricey machine whereas these fax ones are usually cheap and cheerful and it seems almost built to be disposable if you don't